Thank you. I'm very humble after you. <laughs> um, okay, thank you for the invitation, organizers, and Mr. President Crimson. And we are very happy to be here from KNPK. Ayu presented the catching or the hunting of seal sites, so I will focus on fisheries. Short intro. Um, it, it has been a long day, so you must be tired, so I will do it briefly. Um, I will do a short intro. Um, I know that there are many from Greenland, but uh, some from abroad could be interested in knowing more about our organization. And I will, because the headline is living resources, so I will do also mapping about the living resources on and around Greenland. And then I will divide it into species. And just briefly also address the sustainability, global warming, what we have seen, and finally, a statement from KNPK. Thank you. KNPK was established in 1953. Uh, today we have more than 70 branches from Thule, Okanok, and Southern, and to the East Greenland, Itokotomid. We have more than 2,400 paying members. Some of them are not active all year round, but uh, many of the members, they are active fishermen and hunters all year round. Our members are typically, the picture to the left, a dinghy fisherman. You can see it typically in this Bay area and north on, and of course, more south. Uh, these days, the longfish row is going on very actively, and you can see the dinghies working along the coast. The second picture is a small shrimp whistle. Um, the shrimp fisheries started in the late 70s, and that kind of whistles were introduced. And the picture to the right is very typical for uh, Greenlandic fishing whistle. Uh, they were introduced to Greenland in the 60s, and they have been around since. And uh, I will not address the age of their fleet, but it's very old nowadays. But uh, I could maybe briefly ad address that. Our organization is structured like we have a general meeting. It's fourth year. We have an elected chairman. And as you can see, two, uh, a vice chairman and two elected members of board of directors. And uh, the rest of the circles, they are representing the branches or councils. The organization were regrouped in 13 and have had that structure since. Um, as you can see, uh, we have divided into species. And the last one to the left, Council Game, uh, we have the marine mammals on shore and in waters in that um, fora. So we have the meetings at least four times a year. and. When we have hearings uh, to the legislation, we will also have some meetings. The last one, Pelagic Council, we will go back to that. Uh, it's on the establishment. And what do we utilize? And, and 
what do we have of tax, TACs? As you can see on the list, uh, we are allowed to catch 194 minke whales, humpback whales 12, and etc. Um, there are quite substantial numbers, but um, not all hunters are not that pleased with the numbers. They could wish that there were some higher numbers on some certain species. To the left, we have the land animals. That's the actual catch figures. If we go to the fish species, according to Greenland Institute of, of Natural Resources, there are more than 250 species swimming in our waters. Two are, in our point of view, in our organization's major uh, species, <coughs> prawn and Greenland halibut. Then we have seen mackerel, but um, it has uh, there have been some fluctuation. It went up and suddenly it disappeared. Not really, but uh, diminished. Four in our terms are medium, snow crab, cut, lungfish, and Atlantic wolfish. wolfish. Then we have several smaller. Uh, they are not always commercial, but um, of course they, they will be important for some parts of the country. Then uh, if we see the values or volumes, drawn according to the official statistics, 41,000 tons. But it's, it's of course very small. The reason is that it is actual production. In order to produce cooked and peeled, you need three kilos for produce, in order to produce one kilo. So, it's not representing the whole weight, round fish. Mackerel, 28,000. Well, actually, I think it was 32,000 last year. But the year before, it went up to 78. So there were a kind of Klondiking atmosphere, and everybody were interested in entering the fisheries. So. I, don't, I will not call it a war, but there was a battle <laughs> about the quotas. Snow crab, uh, well, the, again, it's actual production number. The catch number will be 1,900 uh, tons, metric tons. Value, you can read it yourself. Yeah. But uh, as it was mentioned earlier, the value of fish species uh, represents 92.4 percent two years ago. So it's very significant and very important for our economy. Uh, of course, we shall run our fisheries um, with fish regulation. And it was mentioned by the CEO of Royal Greenland that we need fisheries management plans. And we are very agree on that from our organization. Uh, we are working on it. We are very active. And there is an ongoing revision of the Fisheries Act. And uh, in the revision, the fisheries management are also addressed. So we are taking care of that, we will be very active and supporting to the process. I have an example, but uh, because of the plane, uh, I will not go so much into the management plan. But uh, when you are following the news from Greenland, you can get the uh, image that uh, we are always asking for added uh, TACs, added quotas, but uh, it's not the case. We have the management plan and we respect that like one of the most uh, well-known politicians used to say, uh, we have never eradicated any 
species. So we will not do it. And we will, from our organization, be a very strong part in that work. In 1953, when KNPK was established, one of the main purpose of the setting up in inauguration was the term that we shall protect our resources. The term uh, what is it? sustainability was not invented at that time, but uh, we had a very similar in our main purpose of the organization. So finally, uh, traditional knowledge has politically been encouraged, but uh, in, in actual real world, we haven't seen it materialized yet. But I know that there, in the regime, current regime, they, they stipulated that it shall be incorporated in the Fisheries Act. Global warming is very exciting, and we saw a new species of mackerel very good, and we hope that we will see some more. So there are both pros and cons in global warming. So, and the living resources, my ancestors, they went into our fjord, Grunnok, and we are the fifth generation who have utilized the Arctic jar. So we should also, we should also continue to uh, run our resources ourselves, but of course in respect to international law. Thank you.